Need a simple, practical intro to CanOpen? In this guide, we introduce the CanOpen protocol basics, including the Object Dictionary, Services, SDO, PDO, and Master or Slave Notes. Note, CanOpen can seem complex, so this tutorial is a visual intro in layman's terms. Keep watching to fully understand CanOpen. What is CanOpen? CanOpen is a CAN-based communication protocol. The CanOpen standard is useful as it enables off-the-shelf interoperability between devices, notes, an example, industrial machinery. Further, it provides standard methods for configuring devices, also after installation. CanOpen was originally designed for motion-oriented machine control systems. Today, CanOpen is extensively used in motor control, stepper or server motors, but also a wide range of other applications, like the following. Robotics, including automated robotics, conveyor belts, and other industrial machinery. Medical, including x-ray generators, injectors, patient tables and dialysis devices. Automotive, including agriculture, railway, trailers, heavy-duty, marine, and more. The following is important to understand. CanOpen is a higher-layer protocol based on CANBUS. This means that CANBUS, ISO 11898, serves as the transport vehicle for CANOpen messages, like a truck for containers. Specifically, you can view CANOpen from a seven-layer OSI model. Here, the CANBUS represents the two lowest layers, number one, physical, and number two, data link. This means that CAN simply enables the transmission of frames with an 11-bit CAN ID a remote transmission bit, RTR, and 64 data bits. In other words, fields relevant to higher layer protocols. In this way, CANBUS plays the same role in CANOpen as it does in example the J1939 protocol. For more on the OSI model, see our full CANOpen intro article. Even if you are familiar with CANBUS and for example, J1939, the CanOpen protocol adds six new important concepts, which we'll introduce here. Number one, communication models. There are three models for device or node communication, master-slave, client-server, and producer-consumer. Number two, communication protocols. Protocols are used for communication, an example, configuring nodes, SDOs, or transmitting real-time data, PDOs, Number three, device states. A device supports different states. A master node can change state of a slave node, an example, resetting it. Number four, object dictionary. Each device has an OD with entries that specify, an example, the device config. It can be accessed via SDOs. Number five, electronic data sheet. The EDS is a standard file format for OD entries, allowing, in example, service tools to update devices. Number six, device profiles. Standards describe, in example, I.O. modules, CIA 401, and motion control, CIA 402, for vendor independence. This illustration shows how the CanOpen concepts link together. In the following, we will detail each of the concepts. In a CanOpen network, several devices need to communicate. For example, in an industrial automation setup, you may have a robot arm with multiple servo motor nodes and a control interface, PC node. To facilitate communication, three models exist within CanOpen, each closely linked to the CanOpen protocols that we look at shortly. We'll briefly review each of them here. Number one, master or slave. One node, for example, the control interface, acts as application master or host controller. It requests data from the slaves, for example, servo motors. This process is used in diagnostics or state management. There can be 0 to 127 slaves in standard applications. Note that in a single CanOpen network, there can be different host controllers sharing the same data link layer. Number 2. Client-Server a client sends a data request to a server, which replies with the requested data. Used an example when an application master needs data from the OD of a slave. 
A read from a server is an upload, while a write is a download. The terminology takes a server-side perspective. Number 3. Consumer-Producer Here, the producer node broadcasts data to the network, which is consumed by the consumer node. The producer either sends this data on request, pool model, or without a specific request, push model. As evident, the models are practically identical, but we distinguish between them for terminology consistency. The CAN Open Frame To understand CAN Open communication, it is necessary to break down the CAN Open CAN Frame. The 11-bit CAN ID is referred to as the Communication Object Identifier, COB ID, and is split in two parts, the first four bits, which equal a function code, and the next seven bits, which contain the node ID. To understand how the COBE ID works, let's look at the predefined allocation of identifiers used in simple CAN open networks. As evident, the COBE IDs like 381 and 581 are linked to the communication services like Transmit PDO3 and Transmit SDO. As such, the COBE ID details which node is sending or receiving data and what service is used. For example, a CAN open device with node ID 5 would transmit an SDO via the 11-bit CAN ID 585. This corresponds to a binary function code of the 1011 and a node ID of 5. In binary, that would be 00001011. In our full CAN open intro article, You'll also find an online COBE ID converter for looking up CAN open COBE IDs and returning basic information. To detail the second important CAN open concept, we'll briefly list the seven CAN open service types. For details on each of them, see our full CAN open intro article. Number one, network management, NMT. The NMT service is used for controlling the state of CAN open devices. In example, pre-operational, operational, stopped, by means of NMT commands. In example, start, stop, reset. Number two, synchronization, sync. The sync message is used in example to synchronize the sensing of inputs and actuation of several can open devices, typically triggered by the application master. Number three, emergency, MC. The emergency service is used in case a device experiences a fatal error, an example, a sensor failure, allowing it to indicate this to the rest of the network. Number four, timestamp, time, PDO. With this communication service, a global network time can be distributed. The time service contains a six byte date and time information. Number five, process data object, PDO. The PDO service is used to transmit real-time data between devices. In example, measured data, such as position or command data, such as torque requests. We'll detail this shortly. Number six, service data object, SDO. The SDO services are used to access or change values in the object dictionary of a can open device. In example, when an application master needs to change certain configurations of a CAN open device. We'll also detail this shortly. Number seven, node monitoring, heartbeat, SDO. The heartbeat service has two purposes, to provide an alive message and to confirm the NMT command. Amongst the seven CAN open services, the PDO and SDO services are particularly important as they form the basics of most CAN open communication. We deep dive on both of these, but first we need to introduce a core concept of CAN open, the object dictionary. All CAN open nodes must have an object dictionary, OD. But what is it? The object dictionary is a standardized structure containing all parameters describing the behavior of a can open node. OD entries are looked up via a 16 bit index and an 8 bit sub index. For example, index 1008, sub index 0 of a can open compliant node, OD contains the node device name. Specifically, an entry in the object dictionary is defined by attributes. Index. This is a 16-bit base address of the object, object name. This is the manufacturer device name, object code. 
This can be an array, variable, or a record. Data type. This can, for example, be visible underscore string, unsigned 32, or record name. Access. This would be RW, read or write, RO, read only, or WO, write only. Category. This indicates if the parameter is mandatory or optional. The object dictionary is split into standardized sections where some entries are mandatory and others are fully customizable. Importantly, OD entries of a device, an example a slave, can be accessed by another device, an example a master, via CAN using an example SDOs. This might let an application master change whether a slave node logs data via a specific input sensor or how often the slave sends a heartbeat. To understand the OD, it is helpful to look at the human readable form, the electronic data sheet, and the device configuration file. In practice, configuring or managing complex can open networks will be done using adequate software tools. To simplify this, the CIA 306 standard defines a human readable and machine friendly INI file format, acting as a template for the OD of a device. An example, the Servo Motor 3000. This EDS is typically provided by the vendor and contains info on all device objects, but not values. Assuming a factory has bought a Servo Motor 3000 to integrate into their conveyor belt, in doing so, the operator edits the device EDS and adds specific parameter values and or changes the name of each object described in the EDS. In doing so, the operator effectively creates what is known as a device configuration file, DCF. With this in place, the Servo Motor 3000 is ready for integration into the specific CAN open network on site. Reviewing real EDS or DCF examples is one of the best ways to really understand the object dictionary of CAN open. Note, for example, the difference between an EDS and DCF object entry and how the DCF contains specific parameter values. We recommend checking out the CIA 306 standard to gain a deeper understanding of the OD, EDS, and DCF with practical examples. As mentioned, the DCF is typically created upon device integration. However, often it will be necessary to read and or change the object values of a node after initial configuration. This is where the SDO service comes into play. The SDO service allows a CAN open node to read or edit values of another node's object dictionary over the CAN network. As mentioned under the communication models, the SDO services utilize a client server behavior. Specifically, an SDO client initiates the communication with one dedicated SDO server. The purpose can be to update an OD entry called an SDO download or read an entry SDO upload. In simple master or slave networks, the node with NMT master functionality acts as the client for all NMT slave nodes reading or writing to their ODs. Let's look at an example of a client node SDO download. The client node can initiate an SDO download to node 5 by broadcasting a specific CAN frame known as an SDO receive, aka request, CAN frame. This will trigger node 5 and be ignored by other nodes. Let's look at the frame in detail. First, COBE ID 605 reflects the use of an SDO receive, COBE ID 600 plus node ID. The CCS, client command specifier, is the transfer type. In example, one, download, two, upload. In is the number of bytes in data bytes, four to seven, that do not contain data. Valid if E and S are set. If set, E indicates an expedited transfer. All data is in a single CAN frame. If set, S indicates that data size is shown in N. Index, 16 bits, and subindex, 8 bits, reflect the OD address to be accessed. Finally, bytes 4 through 7 contain the data to be downloaded to Node 5. For more details, see our CAN open intro article. In general, SDOs are flexible but carry a lot of overhead, making them less ideal for real-time operational data. This is where the PDO comes in. The PDO service is used for effectively sharing real-time operational data across CAN open nodes. 
For example, the PDO would carry pressure data from a pressure transducer or temperature data from a temperature sensor. But wait, can't the SDO service just do this? Yes, in principle, the SDO service could be used for this. However, a single SDO response can only carry four data bytes due to overhead, like the command byte and OD addresses. Further, let's say a master node needs two parameter values, an example, sense temp2 and torque5 from node5. To get this via SDO, it would require four full CAN frames, specifically two requests and two responses. In contrast, a PDO message can contain eight full bytes of data, and it can contain multiple object parameter values within a single frame. Thus, what would require at least four frames with an SDO service could potentially be done with one frame in the PDO service. The PDO is often seen as the most important CAN open protocol as it carries the bulk of information. To get a bit more into detail, let's look at how the PDO service works. For PDOs, the consumer-producer terminology is used. Thus, a producer produces data, which it transmits to a consumer, master using a transmit PDO, TPDO. Conversely, it may receive data from the consumer via a receive PDO, RPDO. Producer nodes may, an example, be configured to respond to a sync trigger broadcasted by the consumer every 100 milliseconds. Node 5 may then, an example, broadcast a specific transmit PDO with COBE ID 185. Note, hear how the data bytes are packed with three parameter values? These values reflect real-time data of specific OD entries of Node 5. The nodes that use this information, the consumers of course, need to know how to interpret the PDO data bytes. At this stage, you might be wondering, isn't the PDO service similar to J1939, PGNs, and SPNs? Yes, to some extent, this is similar to how a specific J1939 parameter group, PG, will contain multiple SPNs, or signals, aka data parameters, in the eight data bytes. The J1939 CAN frame does not need to waste data bytes on decoding information because this is known by the relevant nodes and by the external tools via, an example, J1939 PBC files or the J1939 PDF standards. One subtle difference is that in CANOPEN, these PDO mappings are more often configurable and may be changed during the creation of the DCF and or via the SDO service. There are several use cases for logging CANOPEN data via an example, a CAN bus data logger. Generally, CAN open data can be used to, an example, analyze operational data. Wi-Fi CAN loggers can also be used for, an example, over-the-air SDOs. CAN open is often used in EV forklifts or automated guided vehicles and warehouses, where monitoring, an example, state of charge helps reduce breakdowns and improve battery life. Industrial machinery can be monitored via IoT CAN loggers in the cloud to predict and avoid breakdowns based on the CAN open data. Further, a CAN logger can serve as a black box for industrial machinery, providing data for use in disputes between OEMs and users, or as part of rare issue diagnostics. If you want to learn more about logging CAN open data, check out our CAN open data logger intro or the CAN Edge series of CAN bus data loggers. Also, if you enjoy our intro videos, please share, like, or subscribe.